I want to talk about the Muslim flight attendant. Um, her name is Cherie Stanley, and she has been suspended from Express Jet Airlines because of um, because her faith teaches her not to consume nor serve alcohol. And as a flight attendant, she is, uh, you know, flight attendants, they get get us alcohol, you know, amongst other things, you know, make sure that we're safe and all those other things. But one of their jobs is to serve us drinks. And if we want an alcoholic beverage, then, then they should be able to do that. Um, for, she has been with Express Jet for three years, and two years ago she converted to Islam, and and because of that, she began to take her faith very um, seriously and decided to no longer uh, serve alcohol on the airline. In the midst of doing that, she got a, relig a religious objection, uh, accommodation rather, with her airlines, and for two years that accommodation worked fine. And that's what religious accommodations are there for. Um, uh, companies want to be welcoming and diverse, and they want to be able to include people who may have to, uh, who may require a uh, religious accommodation. Everything was fine until one of her employees, one of her coworkers, rather, uh, decided to report her. And in the report, I, I think it's, um, it's, I think it's revealing. Most people focus on the fact that she refused to serve alcohol. But the actual report from her co-worker included complaints about her not serving alcohol, but also having, watch this, a, a book full of foreign writing as well as wearing a headscarf. Now, this was a part of the formal complaint that led to her suspension. One of the things that I really harp on are the intentions of the people of what people do. The intentions of what people do. That, to me, is more important than anything else. Now, I will talk about the broader story, the bigger issue, whether or not she should be uh, able to be a flight attendant and not serve alcohol, seeing as that's one of the key functions. We'll discuss that. But I want to discuss the underlying impetus behind the individual who reported her, because I think we see this a lot. We see, um, I'll be honest with you, just xenophobic, xenophobic Islamophobic, racist people who are either offended, terrified, or quite frankly, just want to troll. They reported her, filed a formal complaint about her not serving alcohol, but included in that formal complaint was a conversation about her headscarf and about a book with foreign writing. God forbid you have to work with someone who has a headscarf on their head. And for God forbid, there's actually books out there that have foreign writing in them. That shows you how narrow-minded and closed-minded and xenophobic and bigoted the person who reported her was. Now, because the intentions of that individual who reported her were simply, to me, uh, unfounded and, and disingenuous, then it seems to me that there is a problem with the company revoking the accommodation that they originally gave her. Now, this is why this is news. Well, it's news because it's a case in and of itself, but it's also news because people are trying to compare it to Kim Davis out of Kentucky, Rowan County, Kentucky, the, the religious clerk who refuses to sign uh, same-sex marriages certificates. It's news because um, it's, it's a lot of people are positioning on both sides saying, um, what about this? Are we going to are, are you going to allow religious accommodations uh, exemptions for this? Are you going to defend religious freedoms here and not there or vice versa? Are you going to fight Mike Huckabee? Are you going to fight for religious liberty for for Kim Davis? because she's a Christian, or are you willing to fight for religious freedoms for this Muslim as well? And, and, and I don't want to get into that comparison because everybody has taken that position, and, and I think that's going to be over-talked and, and, and over-cooked and overdone. Um, but for me, the question is not whether or not we are going to stand against or fight against religious freedoms on behalf of um, Sh uh, Cherie Stanley. It's It's do we really believe that these cases are the same? There's some really very fundamental differences between these cases. Now, let me start here. I personally think if you are a religious objector, then you should object and take the consequences. For me, 
if I decided if 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 we were living in wartime and I was young enough for the draft, which I'm not, they don't want me, uh, <laughs> I would have a religious objection. I would have a moral objection, but I would I would wrap it in a religious objection, fighting a war that I did not see as a just war. But with that objection comes penalties. You don't have a an objection to our system and not suffer the penalties. And so I think Cherie, if if she is sincere about her faith, which it obviously looks like she, it is, she is, then she should go to another company. Go to another company that can accommodate her religious accommodation, to be redundant with that word. Um, so I, that's what I, I just personally think. Now, she became a Muslim after the fact, so it wasn't though she went into the job to become, um, to be a flight attendant, knowing that it was contradictory to her faith. But after a conversion point, um, they made an accommodation, and because of the troll uh, co-worker, now that accommodation is no longer valid, right? So it's this one, it's, it's kind of, it's all kind of mixed up in terms of when, who, what, where, and how. But in this case, I think, I think, think it operates on multiple levels one this is not kim davis let's just set that out in, in front this is not kim davis because kim davis in kentucky is a is a state employee she is a public servant and she is executing um licenses that are in line with constitutional freedoms she is issuing licenses that will grant rights and to deny those rights is unconstitutional. There are really no constitutional rights to be served alcohol. I know it's prohibition. Prohibition was, you know, was over, to, you know, was repealed. Not, you know, what is it? Uh, the the amendment was, um, they had a counter amendment. Um, I understand that. But there is no constitutional rights for someone to have to serve you alcohol. There are rights that are associated with marriage, that if a clerk claims to have a religious objection from, then she is now infringing on your rights. So there is a very fundamental difference between the flight attendant who refuses to serve alcohol and Kim Davis in Kentucky. But I would argue that if you have a religious, religious objection, then take the consequences of the religious objection and keep moving. That's that's just where I am. So Express Airlines, Express Jet, Jet Airlines and Cherie Stanley, that's the story going on there. So it remains to be seen how this is going to play out. Um, but it is not Kim Davis. Kim Davis is trying to keep other people from having the secular rights of marriage versus a flight attendant who simply says, I don't want I'm not stopping you from consuming alcohol. I just don't want to be the one to serve you alcohol. And, and still, uh, like I said at the top of this conversation, I feel like um, that, you know, just take the take the suspension, uh, go to another company, just move on because you're obviously working with coworkers who have a complete disdain for your faith. And if this company revoked your accommodation because of this type of complaint where they're complaining about you wearing a headscarf and they're complaining about you uh, having a book with foreign writings. If that's the type of company you're working for, then maybe you should consider uh, not working for them.